Hey y'all, welcome to fourth grade, chapter 10, lesson one. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, before we do, I wanna give you guys a little bit of help. So screenshot this, copy it down, whatever you need to do. Um, just It just kind of gives you, it's directly from the book, but it just kind of gives you an idea um, of what you need to know. So go ahead and screenshot that, do whatever it is that you need to do to make sure you've got that information, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and get started um, with number two, okay? So for G and H, it wants us to just draw and label an example of the figure, okay? Well, G and H, it's a line. That's it, guys, and then we're gonna label G, and H, okay? Super easy, okay? Don't make it harder than it's gotta be, okay? We need an acute, okay? So there's three ways to remember um, uh, acute, obtuse, and a right angle, okay? A right angle is always gonna have that little box in there. That one's easy, okay? When someone says acute, I always think of a kitten because he's so cute. So you use that little voice, okay? When someone says obtuse, I think obnoxious, which is bigger and louder and grander than anything that's actually necessary, okay? So when it's open more than 90 degrees, obtuse, because it's bigger and louder and obnoxious, okay? When it's smaller than 90 degrees, it's acute, okay? So just so that you guys kind of have an idea of what I'm doing, okay? So now, it wants to give uh, an acute angle for J, K, and L, okay? So all we need is something smaller than 90 degrees. This is 90 degrees, okay? Going straight across, straight up and down and over to the side, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it smaller than that, okay? So now we have J, we have K, and we have L, okay? And both of those get lines off of them or get arrows off of them, okay? Now, a line, a straight line for BC. You'll notice this one has an arrow. We put an arrow on it. This one just goes between B and C, okay? B, C, done, okay? No arrow, doesn't go past the dot, right on the end there, okay? Now, we are going to use this little diagram here, and we're going to name a line segment first, okay? Well, a line segment goes directly between two, just like these guys, just like B and C up here on number four, okay? So I'm going to go with E and F. Okay, and there's a line over both of them, no arrow, no nothing, okay? Now we're gonna name a right angle. Well, here's my right angle, so E, J, H. E, J, H. Oh, sorry, they went to F, not H, I'm sorry. So make that make that an F, not an H. They went to the F dot, not the H dot, my bad. Okay. Okay, name an obtuse angle. So one that is bigger than 90 degrees, okay? Well, they went, I'm going to do another color so we can all see them, okay? They went C, E, J. So C, oh, which is right here, C, E, and down to J, okay? 
So if we're looking at it, it's always easier for me to look at in the shape of an L kind of. So if you're looking at it, that's bigger than an L. It leans back further than an L, okay? So, so we're gonna have angle C, E, J, okay? And then we're gonna name array, okay? Array, goes, oh, well, here's one right here. It goes from J through D, okay? So we're going to go J, D, with a line over it with an arrow, okay? All right, trying to do it with all the colors so y'all could see, okay? Okay, so now we're just going to see if it's, an acute, an obtuse, or a right angle for these guys, okay? So classify A, F, D. Well, here's A to F and to D. Well, that is definitely leaned back further than a 90 degree angle. So we're going to say it's obtuse. Okay. Now, C, F, E. So I'm going to go from C to F to E. Well, that is perfectly up and down, and there's even a little box to tell you. So that is a right angle. Okay. Now, I want to know two acute angles. Okay. Well, here's one right here. Okay. So we have angle. A, F, B, okay, and we have an angle D, F, E. Hopefully you can see my colors, okay. Okay, all right guys, let's go over onto the back where you guys are gonna do the lesson check, just like always, okay, and then we're gonna go down to the final review. It says, Jam's pencil is 8.5 centimeters long. Ted's pencil is longer. Write a decimal that could represent the length of Ted's pencil. Well, if Jam's is 8.5 centimeters long, then Ted's could be 9 centimeters. Then, it could be 10 centimeters. It could be 20 centimeters, okay? Anything longer than 8.5, okay? Kayla buys a shirt for $8.19. She pays with a $10 bill. How much change should she receive? Well, $10 minus $8.19. Okay? Now, obviously, none of those zeros can take away the whole numbers underneath them. Okay? So I'm going to drop my decimal first so I don't forget. And then I'm going to go over here. I'm going to make that a zero. One. I'm going to borrow one, making it a nine. Make that a 10. And I'm going to borrow one from this one, making that last one a 10. Okay? So now I have 10 take away 9, which is 1. 9 minus 1, which is 8. 9 minus 8, which is 1. And don't forget to put a dollar sign in front of it. Okay? Sasha donated 9 one hundredths of her class's entire can collection for the food drive. What decimal is equivalent to 9 over 100? Well, you just need a 9 in the hundredth spot, okay? Well, you have a decimal. The first spot after that's the tenth, so that's not going to be it. The next spot is the hundredth. Boom, done. Okay, you can put a zero in front of that decimal if you want to. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change anything, okay? Jose jumped eight and a third feet. This was two and one Sorry, two and two thirds feet farther than Lila jump. How far did Lila jump? Well, let's find out, shall we? I'm going to grab a piece of scrap paper. Okay, so eight and one third feet is two and two thirds feet 
times Lila's. Okay, I'm going to show you how to start doing a little bit of algebra. Okay, now I need to get how far Lila jumped. So I need to do the opposite of the sign, which is to divide. The fraction line is a division line. Okay, and I have to divide by two and two thirds because that's the number that's over here. Now, whatever I do to this side of the equal sign, I have to do to the other side. So I have to divide it by two and two thirds, okay? Now that looks a little wonky right now. Give me just a second, okay? Be patient. So now I have eight and one third divided by two and two thirds, okay? So now I'm actually going to, before I do the keep change flip, I'm going to go ahead and turn them into dead men. So we affectionately call this guy dead man because when you turn it to the side, it looks a little bit like a dead man. Okay, so 8 times 3 is 24 plus one more is 25. 25 over, and I keep my denominator, okay, divided by 3 times 2 is 6 plus two more is eight, and I keep my denominator, okay? Now, when we are dividing fractions, we keep the first one, we change the sign to the, to, to the multiplication, and we flip the second sign, the, the second fraction, okay? So now, the only thing that I'm gonna be able to do is I'm gonna reduce the threes with a top and a bottom of three. So three goes into three once on both of those, okay? Eight doesn't go into 25 evenly, and I can't reduce anything using a one. Um, there's not a number that goes into eight that goes into 25 evenly, so I can't do anything with that, okay? So now I'm gonna multiply straight across, and I'm gonna get 25 over eight, okay? So now when I turn that back into a mixed number, it's gonna go eight goes into 25 three times, which is 24, 25 minus 24 is one, and I keep my denominator. Three and one eight, eight, okay? All right, so if you need to do the 25 by eight and do your division that way, you totally can, nothing wrong with that, okay? All right, y'all. Thanks for hanging out for 10.1. Come on back for 10.2. See you soon.